let's talk a little bit about how he entered history and then sort of vanished from it because of his relationship to Lord Alfred Douglas and Oscar Wilde. Um, well, as, as you may or may not know, he was the catalyst that brought Lord Alfred Douglas and Oscar Wilde together. He had joined, Johnson had joined the, the Rhymers Club, which was started by W.B. Yeats, and one evening <coughs> Oscar came down with John Gray and he gave Lionel one of the earliest copies of Dorian Gray. It had been serialised in, was it Lippincott's magazine? But it came out in a book and <laughs> Lionel gave his copy to Lord Alfred Douglas who was immediately smitten by the book. He was supposed to have read it over 14 times, not at the same sitting, but, um, and he was sort of passionate about the book and he begged Lionel um, to introduce the two of them. They sort of, they knew each other through the Rhymes Club and also um, Oscar had met Lionel at Oxford and they'd struck up a sort of loose friendship mm -hmm. of which we don't know too much, but they did meet in London. And so we move on to Tight Street in Chelsea and that fateful day. Do you know the date? Oh, the date alludes the, me. The date when, um, when Lord Alfred Douglas met Wilde. Yeah. No, I don't. <clears throat> Robert's searching his memory, but... We should give a prize. 1891. I don't know the date. No, okay. Anyway, I'm going to pass this right to you, because I've forgotten what else I'm supposed to be answering. Okay. But yes, that, <coughs> that was one of the, the key things. I think... I don't know why, but... And there's been many absolutely brilliant wild biographers. Lionel is always pushed out of the way. <clears throat> there were three people in that room um, and he maintained a friendship with Lord Alfred Douglas all the way out but he's he's just become this unfortunate figure that's like we've got to push him out of the way so we can get onto the main and most important bit but three people are three people and they all had a story. And in fact um, at the time in 1891 when he got Dorian Gray Lionel Johnson was quite pleased by it and he wrote a, a piece called In Honorum, very short, that uh, didn't appear in during <coughs> Lionel's lifetime and therefore also not in Wilde's lifetime, um, called In Honor of Dorian and His Creator, where he said, Blessed be you, Oscar, who deem me worthy of this book for friendship's sake, modulating in the Roman mode, praises to the Dorian ode, I give you thanks. Hear the lovely rose, flourishes amid the roses, when suddenly comes death. Behold the man, behold the god, oh that this mode of pity and genius were but mine. Avidly he loves strange loves, savage with beauty, plucks strange flowers. The more his soul is darkened, his face displays its brightness more. False, but how radiantly so. Here are apples of Sodom, here the hearts of vices and sweet sins, in the heavens and in the depths, <coughs> be to you who perceive so much glory of all glories. So he's quite happy with Oscar, but it sort of went downhill from there, didn't it? It did so. Um, it, it did go downhill, but I was going to say that he originally wrote that so discreet was Lionel that he originally wrote that in um, Latin, didn't he? So, so that's a translation. So how did it go south? What happened? Um, I think Oscar said somewhere that he, he sort of put Bosie under siege, didn't he? And then after six months he said the siege is over, so he, he'd won. They were in a relationship. Um, it took Lionel a, a little bit to sort of understand, I think, what that meant because from reading between the lines and a few things that were said, they'd been in a relationship since school, so, so it must have been difficult for him. And also he, he felt that the relationship undermined um, Bosie, oddly. Right. 
and his studies. <clears throat> right. So, and this is when, this is the last thing I will read for you. It is Destroyer of a Soul. Oh, yes. Which you can guess was not exactly a pain to Oscar Wilde. This is probably, you know, this is this is sort of what you would write on Facebook now if a friend of yours started going out with somebody who that didn't want to, to see you anymore. The friend didn't want to see you anymore and was angry at you. But of course, Lionel said it much better than I would say it on Facebook because this was for Oscar Wilde. I think it was first published. It said to for Oscar Wilde, but then, then as thing as things, unfortunately, went the way they did, he decided to remove Oscar's name from it. So some books you'll see the dedication to Wilde, and in others you don't. So this is 1892, months after he was praising Oscar, he wrote, "I hate you with a necessary hate." <laughs> First I sought patience, passionate was she, my patience turned in very scorn of me, that I should dare forgive a <coughs> sin so great as this through which I sit disconsolate, mourning for that live soul I used to see, soul of a saint, whose friend I used to be till you came by cold, corrupting fate. Why come you now, you whom I cannot seize with pure and perfect hate to hate? Go, ring the death bell with a triumphant toll. Say you, my friend, sits by me still? Ah, peace! Call you this thing, my friend, this nameless thing, this living body, hiding its dead soul. So quite damning there, both on Oscar and on, on Bozy too. Oh, oh, yes. I mean, it is a real scream of, of pain and rage and so so many things. Very complex <coughs> poem. Yeah. Um, so there's an awful lot going on that, that I think we'll never really know about the background story to everything. But that, as far as pure emotions goes, says, I'm very hurt. 